when you come into India, there is always discovery after rediscovery after rediscovery. Like for instance, you go to Jagannath temple and then you realize that's one of the 10 temple which built out of millions of years or you're going to Badrinath and Himalayas, then you realize there are three or four Badrinaths and Bhavishya Badri, the future Badrinath, the Badrinath from the past, another Badrinath. And it's like, what's going on here? And the real answer is spiritual world is unlimited. So when we talk about Krishna, what kind of Krishna are you talking about? Krishna Dvarakesh, Krishna Vasudev, Krishna Nanda Nandan, Yashoda Nandan. So there's so many Krishnas. So many divine uh, representations. So it's very hard to accommodate all these things. So when you go to um, Prayak, it says very clearly, this is a Tirtaraj. Tirtaraj, that's the king of all holy places of India. Then for Neophyte devotee, natural doubt come, and what about Vrindavan, like Jagannath Puri, Navadvip, Mayapur? This is a Tirtaraj place. But for someone like Gurudev, he could harmonize with everything. So the story from Garga Samhita tells that once all the holy places got together and they have seen Prayag and they were so much amazed by Prayag purity because Trivenia, the Triveni means Sangam, that's where the three river meets. The Ganga, which is coming from Lotus Feet of Vishnu, the Jamuna, which comes from Goloka Vrindavana itself, and Saraswati, very mystical river, which just starting in this world, visible in Himalayas, and then become invisible, and it's coming up in that place, Sangam. So when we were with Amit, I said, so I can see how water melt of the Ganga and Yamuna, but where is Saraswati? He said, well, actually, the expert visionary, he will recognize where Saraswati is. But, you know, we can say this, you see this white foam? Because Saraswati is like milk, she's a white color. That's representation of Saraswati. But, you know, it's due to mundane eyes. It's almost invisible, but you can understand where three holy rivers meet and where all the water comes in, annihilation of all the world. That's from Prayak, all the water comings to cover the whole planet. And you think it's a very mystical place, and you go to a place where Dashashva made a god, ten sacrifices conducted by Lord Brahma. Then you think of this place is since time immemorial, the gods descend there to worship. Like not common people, the gods themselves, Lord Brahma, he accepts this place as a sacred to uh, do his sacrifices, Prajapati and other wishes. So it's very impressive, and they're, they're the deity of Veni Madhava. So Veni, three Veni, means three river, and Veni Madhava, the great Lord Krishna who controlled that place. So Priyak, Tirtaraj, and he's the Raj of Priyak. It's a wonderful thing. So Priyak is the king of all the holy places, and Veni Madhava, he's the king of the, of the king of holy places. So once all the holy places went together, they prayed to Prayag and they said, you are the best actually, you are the highest, the purest, because three holy rivers comes here, all the gods, all the rishis, all the munis, all the sacrifices, the great devotees, the kumbha mela taking place here, the drops of immortality descend here, everything is so sacred here, so one can just be here, can achieve liberation and salvation. And Prayag felt very auspicious. I am very happy. Huh? Amarnam Prayak. Then he have seen like other holy churches are worshipping him and he was very happy and I'm very happy, yes. But then he was very disturbed that Vrindavan didn't came to him. He thought, you know, all holy places of this place are coming to worship me because I'm Krishna recognized me. If I get recognition by Krishna, that means 
you know, what's wrong with Vrindavan? You know, it's such a puffed up holy place. So the Prayak left to see Vrindavan and finally, when he saw Vrindavan, Vrindavan didn't came to receive him and offer a worship. And Prayak was very disturbed. And he's got very angry. And then Krishna came out of Vrindavan himself and said, Hey, what can I do for you, king of holy places? And then Prayak said, Actually, I'm coming to find out why I'm not worshipped Vrinda by Vrindavan, because I'm the king of holy places, and you established me as a king. So what's, what's wrong with that? And Krishna said very simply, and he said, Prabhu, this is my own self. Vrindavan is me. It's no different than me. I made you king of all the holy places for benefit of all the world. People coming to your places, they worship their karma, they worship their sins. They're getting like ready to spiritual life. But Vrindavan is something different. Vrindavan is myself. John Makarma Chamediviam Smaram Yveti Tatvatah. I am Vrindavan. My devotees are part of me. They're part of my divine family. To become a devotee is not a simple thing. Because it says in scriptures, Aham Bhaktah Parad, you know, I am connect. So that's where the Mayavad principle, Soham, Aham Brahmasmi, Parachegam Brahman, the Mahavakyas, they're different from Vaishnava vision. Because in Vaishnava vision, in Vaishnava vision, it's different than what Mayavadis have seen. Mayavadis, they say, so hum, I'm you, you are me. Or if, you, if I'm you, you are me, then... But in love, you can only love something higher than yourself. So Krishna, when we say Krishna Prema, it means like love to Krishna, but what about Krishna? Does he have a chance to have a Prema? But it says love, you have to love only something higher than you. That's why Krishna loved Radharani. So Shri Guru Maharaj, he said, very interesting, he said, actually Krishna is the most wonderful thing you can ever get because he's an absolute. But he said, but that's not the most miracle thing. The most miracle thing is if somebody can give a Krishna to you. Because, you know, if Krishna is the most wonderful thing and he's most, you know, absolute, then it would be most amazing if somebody can take Krishna and give it to you. Well, that's why, you know, Krishna said to Prayag, sorry, you can't, actually, you can't be here because it's not trying to insult you, actually. When Lord Shiva approached me and said, I want to be more popular than you, you know, it was like a madness of Lord Shiva, he said to Krishna, can I be more popular than you? Krishna said, of course. You can be very popular in this world. The most popular. That's why worship of Shiva is more spread because Krishna gave the blessing. Of course, of course, why not? You know, you're the Lord Shiva, you're my second self. I'm the milk, you're the yogurt. You're able to purify those whose demons and those who say, say you know, saintly personality, both. So I'm giving you that boon and blessing that in this world people know you better than myself. Whatever my temple will be, they'll be like big of your temples. Your place, Kasha, will be, you know, great in the whole world because you can liberate everybody. But, Krishna said, what about me? And that's a beautiful thing that Srila Guru Maharaj explained in Gita. He say, Aham Sarasa Prabhu, Matak Sarvam Prabhastate. That question comes, does God has anything to believe in? Because we always say religion is something for us to believe in God. But the question that Guru Maharaj raised, it's a very Socrates-like question. He asked, does God have anyone to believe in? And we can say on some level he believes in us. That's why this world is still exists. But that's not his biggest belief because there are different levels of belief. So Krishna say, Aham Bhakta Parad, you know, I'm believing in my devotees. I'm living by satisfaction of my devotees, my pure devotees, my love. And nothing I can do. It says in Charitamrita, they're in my heart, I'm in their heart. And what the pure devotees say, they say, we're not yogis. You know, yogis, they're trying to meditate on you. Our problem is we can't forget you. The, the gopis, that's what they say. The problem is we can't forget you. 
you know, everybody's trying to man man up, have a mad back to all, but the Gopi is thinking, how can we, you know, it's so painful to think about Krishna, then we cannot forget, we try to forget. You know, just like a woman, she has a lover and they break in, they try to forget, they can't. So this is the devotees, their natural drove, their heart is so deep that in all circumstances they cannot forget Krishna. And in amazing uh, conditions, when Maharaj Ugrasen went to, he was father of Kamsa, his own son put him in jail because he didn't like that he arrest his Vasudev and Devaki and Kamsa was very powerful demon king, so he put Maharaj Ugrasen in jail and Krishna liberate him and Krishna said like, forgive me. To get, to become my devotees, you had to spend half of your life in jail just to remember about me. Vasudev and Devaki, you know, they were so mad of thinking about me, then I become their son. And you think, well, what is Krishna consciousness where somebody has to be in jail for 10 years or somebody... But we say that the position of Krishna, Maharaj, the Krishna himself wants to embrace position of devotee. So he tells to his devotees, my ability to draw depthness of your heart is to come up with circumstances when you feel necessity to depend on me. And that's why great devotees like Kunti, they say, Vipadasta, Vatatra, Shvata, Tratatra, Jagadguru. If I can have a circumstance where I can be dependent on Krishna, this will be the best conditions of my life. So the great devotees, they're not looking for a good life, they're not looking for like, you know, good climate and good, good economical circumstance. They're looking for only one. Is there any place or any condition I can be dependent on Krishna? And happily they're taking suffering. So when Krishna releases Maharaj Ugrasen, Maharaj Ugrasen get out of the jail, out of jail. Krishna said, actually, Really, I want you to conduct Ashwamedha sacrifice, the horse sacrifice. And Maharaj Ugrasen said, why? He said, because you are such a great Vaishnava. But I want people, world to know about that. It's not for your own, you know, sacrifice for your own self-establishment, ego, pratishta. I just want world to, to understand. All you spend all these years in jail, you're still able and capable to conduct great sacrifices. You're the greatest king. You actually were never polluted by anything. So Marshall Bassan said, okay, you know, if you, <laughs> it's your divine will, I'm like willing to engage myself in this service. So Krishna said to Arjun, I killed them all, but I need some, somebody to collect the glory of that battle, people will remember you. Not only will they remember you, they'll be glorify you more than me. That's what I want. I really want my devotee to be more glorious than myself. That's why I give boons to Lord Shiva and others, because I love my devotees, I live for my devotees. To me, my devotee is more important than myself. Now, Priya, Atma, Yaratma, Atma, Yoyana, Shankara. And a special group of devotees, I'm really... So, we went to Priya at months of Mag where Magmela take place. Magmela is a place where in a cold February time, people come take a bath in Ganga. Mahaprabhu came there in his divine madness. He couldn't, like, but just like pretend of Maharaj Parikshit when he left for, you know, a place on the bank of Ganga to hear a story from Shukadev Goswami. Mahaprabhu came there at the Mag Mela time because everybody's taking bath for one only benefit, the immortality. And Mahaprabhu also took bath in very cold. And if you see so many sadhus, yogis, rishis that came there. But that's where he met Rupa Goswami. And that's where actually he revealed his Rasa Tatra, Dashashwamedha God. 
at Prayag. There was only one Rupa Goswami. He didn't accept all, all these people. It was very private. And that's where Mahaprabhu said to Rupa Goswami, I will give you something now which is so sacred, so divine, that's beyond scriptures. And really, what Rupa Goswami came up with, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and other things, somebody would ask questions, where is this whole Vaishnava literature coming from? He's rarely mentioning Bharat Muni and Bharat Natyam Shastra, he's making drama. How come these people are writing drama? But they don't understand why our gurus, like Rupa Goswami, writing a drama. He's writing a drama because Krishna, do you understand, like a king wants to experience in his pastimes and he's hiring the best writer to write a drama. Krishna himself wants to enjoy a mellow of devotion and he can't describe it, so he needs a pure devotee to come and write a drama. So actually, it's not Krishna actually, it's a Radharani order. To, and he said, write a drama and then say, write two different, separate ones. One about, you know, Dvaraka and one about Vrindavan. Don't mix them together. So at this point, um, that's why we call Rupa Goswami Rasa Tattva Acharya, which has never been given actually before. It's full, in the Bhagavatam, the name of Radharani is not mentioned. You know, Gargarishi giving his divine explanation, Garga Samhita. He's actually explaining who is who, but that divine magnitude, this flow of divine nectar was never given before. And actually, Sanatana Goswami, in his uh, Brihad Bhagavatamritam, he is, um, you know, it's an interesting point. We spoke today with Goswami Maharaj. Originally, the position of Sanatana Goswami is Bhakti Siddhanta. And just recently we had the appearance day of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur. His name is also Bhakti Siddhanta. It's actually a, an interesting point. You know, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives sannyas to himself by picture of his, or maybe not even by picture. You know, there was no one to, he took sannyas from, you know that. At a certain point, he came down, he accepted Vaishnava dress according to like Madhva, Ramanuja, and all the Acharyas, pray to his guru, accept himself sannyas and title. And somebody say, like, wow, it's an English. <laughs> like, but they don't understand. Like you can't really challenge his position because he's one of the Radharaniya. So if you really look at Madhva and Ramanuja and all other predecessors, he did everything perfectly. Mahaprabhu, like Tridanda, you know, he come up with dress. There was never this dress in Vaishnava. This is my body dress, actually. Not saffron was never worn by Vaishnavas. But Saraswati that could put it on. And you know, it's an interesting point. So we are speaking with some sadhus and maybe Juna Akara or some other Akara in Kumbh Mela. And I ask one sadhu, you know, like a fat guy, more fat than me. And I say, so why are you wearing black clothes? And he told me like, the white clothes for brahmacharya to be pure, the saffron clothes for those who are willing to preach, you know, saffron clothes for those who are giving mercy to others, the red clothes for those who are like fighting the world, and black clothes for Paramahamsa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I told him, I also have black clothes, but I'm not Paramahamsa. <laughs> but I also like it. I said, all 
popes and Russian church they were in black clothes, not paramounts. <laughs> but I like the way his answer, you know, he said like <laughs> be brahmachari as pure as, as a white, you know, like the compassion for preaching is a saffron. And you know, like uh, red is the fighting world and black is for paramounts. Uh, that's why I'm wearing black, he said. <laughs> I said, well, you know, it's a very simple definition. Where can, you, where can I buy the set? So, anyway, by, by the time he was speaking to me, my shoes got stolen by his assistants. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought, you know, these guys are like, not only bogus, they're also dangerous. <laughs> like, mind smoking? <laughs> and I told him, I heard you guys have tuberculosis and you're distributing with Shiva Prasad and together. He said, one who's really pure will never be diseased. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can understand, actually it was an interesting point for me at Kumbh Mela, why all this, actually what is that? And later I discovered a very interesting fact that at the time of Guru Nanak, when this whole Kumbh Mela started taking shape, there were armies of sadhus, Digambaris, Nirvanis, they were supposed to be protect Vaishnavas and sages. And they firm armies because the Muslims were terrorizing sadhus and breaking holy places. So all these people actually were never first class sadhus. They were supposed to be naked kamikaze, samurai, self-sacrifice for the sages. But that's, that's how Akara starts. Akara is like a military formation, and they had like Astravadi and Shastravadi. Some people carry the weapons, some people carry the scriptures. But in um, Mahaprabhu teachings, he said, Krishnavarnam Tisham Krishnam Sangapastra Parshidam. There is no way you can change the world with weapons. You can change the world with Sankirtan. So Mahaprabhu, he's not emphasizing on the force. His force is divine transformation, love, affection. That's like a, that's like the biggest force you can ever apply to anyone. Like, you know, one famous, um, one famous politician said in the 16th or 14th century, he said, there is no castle which cannot be opened by donkeys loaded with the gold coins. You know, people used to build castles, the fort nations. But the famous politician said, there's no castle that, you know, they say that, you can't, you can't attack the city, it's so built so well, you can't get it. But he said, not unless you have some donkeys with golden coins. You know, anybody who sent donkeys with golden coins, everybody opened the door for you and welcoming you. So that means Mahaprabhu, he's conquering different style. You know, he's conquering with robes of affection, love, Krishna consciousness. And you know, the robes of affections are very dangerous actually. But if we can apply them in the proper way, then you know, we'll be like him. So it was an interesting point. I spoke with different people, I said, so why are you here? Why are you here at Kumbh Mela? And they say, well, we want to spell Kalpavas. Kalpavas, it means like Kalpa. But remember, Kalpa is also in a God's plane, like a moment. Just like our human life is like mosquito, and God's life is different. So Kalpavas means like a one month, 40 days, being engaged in something auspicious. So people went there, they stay in the tents, they bathe in a, in a river, they worship, they pray, they clean their sins. For something auspicious, but really what they're aspiring for is immortality. At this time, in months of Mag, Mahaprabhu was coming to Rupa Goswami at Dashashwamedha God. There were thousands of people. But very few people understand that God himself descend at this very place. And he's talking to Rupa Goswami. The highest, most 
spiritual message which ever were told in this world since time and creation, the Rasa Tattva. And you know, Rupa Goswami was so amazed by that revelation that he had to write it down. He couldn't like hold it himself. So, you know, he described certain, the art of rasa, but he's thinking, how in this world I can refer, what I can refer to? So it's an interesting point that he took base of his rasa revelation drama. It's actually an interesting point, why drama? Because, I, you know, read a little bit about drama development, what is the script, what is the story, how the whole thing is work. And the main drama masters, you know, actually for you to understand, there's nothing higher from mundane perspective than drama. Neuron, who was like a bad king, empire, he was actually was bad singer, and he was bad, bad actor. But you have to watch his show, okay? <laughs> if you don't, they will kill you. <laughs> he had like one politician who was really famous. And you see him, everybody flatter in your own, like, oh, you are so great, such a great singer. Oh, you know, like in this drama, you were like, you act so, it touched my heart. And you know, Neuron was like, eh, come on, okay. I know you're bullshitting me. But this particular politician who had like very deep effect on him, he would come and say to him, I really like your drama. And he was like, oh! <gasps> with like sword. I said, you could have done much better. I know you can. <laughs> and you're like, yes. I just need to merge in this role. So um, anyway, at a certain point, he's got too much into drama world. So he tried to, to write poetry about uh, Troya. And you know, he understands, you need some immersive experience, you can't bullshit in art. You have to feel it. That's the whole thing about spirituality, art, you have to feel it. You have to be able to descend on that level and transmit from that level. So he's writing poetry about Troya, but it's not like, it's not going anywhere. You know what his decision was? He wants to burn Rome. And he asked his people to burn Rome. And when he see like children, women screaming in the fire, at that point he started getting what was that Troya drama. But again, you know, if you try to play in this world, <laughs> you may have a bad end. <laughs> so his personal drama had a very bad end. And there was like a big riot in Rome. So his minister came to him, bring him knife and said, please kill yourself. Otherwise all these low class people will run away. They rip you at pieces. So in your own, he took like a knife, <laughs> like ready to cut his throat. And his last speech was like, what a beautiful actor dying. <laughs> and he's cut his throat. So, I mean, he was a really crazy guy. <laughs> See, being an empire of the Rome, you can't even believe what it is. The guy wants to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? And why? No, this is an important thing. Because drama, that's what makes you feel. You always want to experience depth of the heart. So there's nothing higher than Krishna Lila. And they're different types. There's some rishis, they're in neutral position, they're just like watching your movie. And Krishna is a great director, better than Tarantino, Spielberg, or anybody. He's a director, I mean, actually, Yoga Maya is a director, he's an actor. He's like a star. And see, the problem in Krishna's film, it's natural. It's not preset, preconceived. It's like, we kind of want to do this, and Krishna thinking, you know, let's do the Kaliya thing today. But how deep it's going to be, nobody knows. So Krishna play, he experienced something. Everybody's in with Krishna, they experience something very deep. 
So those rishis and munis, they're not allowed to Vrindavan. They're yogis. They got mystical vision to see the movie. They're like, <laughs> like with popcorn and some other. <laughs> Holy shit. Because <laughs> they, they can't, just that once you follow the Leela, like Nama, Rupa, Guna, Leela, you can't stop it. It's like, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you my own experience. I'm a very skeptical guy, and I'm very, like, you know, bad character, mean. So I always, like, oh, Brazilian cereal bullshit. But, you know, in the time of the drama guys, they know, only know how to capture the, like, housewives. They know with the art of a good, uh, interesting storytelling, they can capture the heart of practically anyone. So one time I just thought, yeah, I never like cereal. Cereal's bullshit. And then I got cereal called Rome. And I started watching one, two, and then I realized, like 20 maybe. And then I realized I'm watching on the metro, I'm watching on the plane, I'm watching after morning program. <laughs> I'm watching when I take prasadam. Because the story that sucks me in. You understand? The story that sucks me in. And I want to know what's happening with these people. And I, like, and I watch the whole thing. So I slave myself like 20 hours of a good story. But you have to do the master of storytelling. And you have to always give something next. Do you, do you understand? These guys, they're not giving you the whole thing. They'll tell you... Well, watch the next one, you know, like. So, then I understood how, how much capturing it is. That's why a good cereal, that's why, like, everybody knows, oh, you know, start making good cereal, you conquer people. And when Mahabharata cereal start at India, India stopped working, you know that? <laughs> There were like 50 cheers on street and people watching like little crappy TV about Bhishma and Arjuna and Parashura, you know, like, and they're like watching every day. Like trains are not going, you know, like, trains were stopped, crime stop, like economy stop. They're showing the cereal in India. It's actually pretty good. I mean, but, you know, the, the filming quality is like, but the characters and the story, and actually it's accurate, pretty accurate about Krishna's being God, because Peter Brook, it's all, you know, a little bit of bullshit. Indian Mahabharata serial, I watched. And I thought it was cool. It's pretty accurate, actually. They got, the, you know, they've read the Mahabharata. They didn't took the whole other stories, because they're Many, many stories in Mahabharata. But, you know, they've, they've, got, they've, they've got the whole thing together. And it's an amazing. So just think, Radha, Krishna, Nitya, Lila, Kolila, Prakasha, there is also casting, like to be a member of that film. Because Krishna always like, you know, it's like Ram Lila is always going on. You know, guys like, you know, they're like eternally the monkey. Like, lost, you know, you play really, like, you know, okay. And it's travel from universe to universe, like show. There's like place of Ayodhya where uh, Krishna has, Ram has eternal, you know, Sita and the whole thing. But it's travel. And the reason it travels from one material world to another one, it's like circus. The reason it's travel because he needs that extreme environment. You can't have an unperfect environment in a perfect world. So he has to create an unperfect world just for that purpose. Do you understand? So at some point you can say, many people say, well, I feel this world is stage and I'm an actor. No, Jack, you're no one here. You're like a social worker or like nine to five guy. It's actually Krishna's stage. And you know, he'll come in here in one day of Brahma. he come in here in many millions of years. And once in a while, every yuga, some of his avatar come in here. That's what it is. It's not about your game or like being a great person, you know, very special. You're the king or you're this, you're that. It's just like creating the, 
the material world. So, and I was amazed how perfectly human Krishna and other characters play. Like we think, oh, gods are perfect, but it's not, that's not about Krishna Lila. He's perfect in his humanity. But he's not like you. That's the thing. You know, you can't be like him. So there are many, you know, very dramatic points and different Lilas. And like sometimes the Lila take a very deep course like Maharaj Dasharat, the father of Ram, when he sent Ram to forest, like everybody asking, why, why, why have you done that? Why, you know, what's, how can you listen to this stupid wife of yours? Like, why have you done it? And you know what Maharaj Dasharat say? He say, before I did not know why, now I'll tell you the story. I was, it was like 20 something years back, I was very young and handsome man, and I was hunting lions in the mountains. And I was such a great shooter that, you know, I was hunting one particular lion. And this lion was very smart, it was a human killer. At a certain point near the water, I heard him and I thought he's ready to make a jump, so I shoot my arrows. And then I heard some sound, but it was not lions, it was like a human sound. So I came to the water and I saw like young sadhu pierced and hard by arrows. And he told me, I have my blind parents. They're looking, waiting for water. They're in a cave. They're the yogis and brahmins. Are, and you kill me, O king. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I really didn't want to kill you. But you know what? I thought it's lion. He said, you take my parents, take care of them, and, and that's what I want. And you know, he said, oh God, you know, really kill Brahman. It's like the biggest sin. But then, you know, he's taking that water and he's going to that cave and his father and mother are blind. So they hear, the blind parents, they hear his steps. And first they say, oh, son, where have you been? We're thirsty, we're blind, we're invalid. You know, you're playing your, your games and we, we, me and your mother, we want some water. And then they hear the silence. And then they like, why are you not talking to us? Who are you? So this blind people, he's coming to them, he's giving them water and this blind father and mother, they're like, and they understand there's like armor. Like, Who are you? You are Kshatriya. He said, Yes, I'm your king. Oh, you, we so honor. Tell us. That I just killed your son. Mm -hmm. Just now. I thought it's a lion. I shoot my arrows. You know, now you sound dead. You can do anything you want with me. You can curse me, you can send me to hell. I'm here at your service. And they're like crying, you know, because it's the worst thing for the parents to see that your young son dying and you're supposed to be dying. So they tell him, just take us to the body of our son. Let us feel him, touch him at the very last moment. <clears throat> and they're like taking the body of the son and they're like touching the body and the arrows and they're telling, oh, you were you're just like an hour ago, he was our son. Now... You're just a physical body, you're meant to burn. And he said, what can I do? And they say, make a fire. So he made one big fire and put the body And Father and mother, they entered the fire. And before they entered, the father said, as you made us lose our son, one day you will lose your son. So then Maharaj Zahra telling the story, he said, that's what I feel. This prophecy is coming to me. So Guru Maharaj mentioned, he said, one actor at a certain point played the role of Maharaj Dasharat on a deep level. He was like a, a devotee and actor. 
And at that stage of drama, he died. Do you understand? Because Maharaj Dasharat, he's supposed to die at that point. So as he finished that part, he died. So Nityananda Prabhu, when he was in Eka Chakra at a certain point, he collected all the kids and he told, well, we're going to play Ram Lakshman's story and there'll be Indrajit, Shakti Shela weapon and will hit me, you know, and I will die. And remember, you have to like get the Hanuman and find the herbs and get my medicine and then you'll take me back to life. So Nityananda Prabhu is a little boy playing in Eka Chakra near our temple. And, you know, all children amazed, they're all the banavas, the monkeys, this and that, and like growing adults, they're looking for like, what's going on? You know, this boy, he perfectly knows about Ram Lila, how it's possible. And then some child taking like lotus flower and throwing at Nitanda Prabhu. I'm Indrajit, here's my Shakti Shela. And he's just throwing lotus flower, and this lotus flower touched Nitanda Prabhu, he died. And then like the whole village, like why the baby died? Like why this boy died? What have you done? And the children said, nothing, nothing. We just play, I throw in him flower. There's no, and why he died? He has no, no breathing. He's lying here unconsciously 10 minutes. What the... You killed him. No, 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 we didn't kill him. And then one boy telling, don't you remember? He told us that at a certain point he will die. This is Nitanda Prabhu. And don't you remember he told us that we should continue game? The adults were so shocked, that boy was so convincing. And everybody con continued the game. And then the whole village was totally observing some divine mellow where, you know, some boy said, I'm Hanuman, and he challenged the crocodile and Gandharvas and started fighting for the hill and defeat. And he brought some her herbs, and then somebody is a doctor giving to Nitan Prabhu. Nitan Prabhu is like, by smelling this herbs, he's coming back to consciousness, and like whole village, like, Haribo! <laughs> <laughs> so, but in this case, what's interesting, being Nitan Prabhu, he's playing himself as being Ram and Lakshman. You understand? In this life, I'm Nitan Prabhu, in previous life, I'm Baladev, in previous life, I'm Lakshman. And all my avatars I am. But I'll be really interesting to play myself from this new perspective. I want to feel it in my childhood pastimes. So when Krishna talked to Radharani and Baladev, he tell, we'll go to material world in Gaur Lila. We'll experience something we never experienced before. We'll replay all our plays as a children. With fresh youth experience of children, we replay all our lila. It will be very condensed because we only understand what's going on, in the true sense. But we have like very deep, same feelings, even better than that. So that's why Guru Lila is so difficult to understand.